Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor in Washington, D.C. is still reeling from the revelations out of those two IRS whistleblowers from the House Ways and Means Committee yesterday. Important stuff, but even more important is what gets done with it, maybe in other committees in the House, maybe in fact the Judiciary Committee. Joining us now is the chairman of that committee, man who may save this republic, Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chairman. You bet. Well, you bet. Uh, with you, Larry. Thanks, when you thanks saw, you do. of course, uh, when you saw these details, what stuck out to you here? Yeah. Because there's a hell of a lot of corroborating evidence here from some of the things you've been uncovering in your own investigations. Yeah. No, I think two things stuck out. First, the U.S. attorney in Delaware asked for special counsel status and was denied that by Joe Biden's Justice Department, Merrick Garland's Justice Department. Now, if this case doesn't warrant special counsel status, what the heck does? You're talking about the president's son, potentially the president himself involved in some of these forms. I mean, what the heck does? So th th that to me was huge. But I think they did it as you read Mr. Shapley, who is, is, is one of the whistleblowers, you read his opening statement when he was deposed. He talks. He 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 tells in in there that you know they needed to bring this case in three locations in Delaware, D.C., and, and and the Central District of California. And there you have you know Joe Biden appointed U.S. attorneys who who pushed back on everything. So to me, I, it looks like they they denied the special counsel status so they could say, oh, this is the Trump U.S. attorney in Delaware. Everything's fine. We're gonna let him proceed. But they really didn't because they wouldn't give him that that status. Yeah. Second is they kept information from the agents on the case. And this, was, to me, looks like a pattern because we just had John Durham testify this week. And John Durham told us about in 2016, there was intelligence that said this whole Russia-Trump narrative is straight from the Clinton campaign and it's all BS. Intelligence significant enough that Brennan goes and briefs President Obama, Vice President Biden, Attorney General Lynch, and Director Comey, puts it into a memo, gives it to Comey. Comey fails to share it with the FISA court, fails to share it with the, uh, the lawyers preparing the FISA application, and most importantly, fails to share it with the agents on the case. And then when Durham interviewed one of those agents, showed him that referral memo, that, that agent, during his investigation, that agent gets up, he's upset, he walks out of the room with his lawyer, comes back in and says, why in the heck wasn't I given access, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but given yeah. access to that information, this could have changed the whole investigation. Same thing happened here. They yeah. kept critical information from the agents on the case. So that is frightening because it confirms what now what most America knows, which is there's a double standard at the Justice Department. Yeah, and including information with regard to that alleged $5 million bribe to Mr. Biden, but both Mr. Bidens, that would be a total of $10 million. According to these IRS whistleblowers, uh, they said that they had emails that corroborated those exchanges and bank transfers around the same time. FBI never shared that information about the alleged bribe that they learned about from their credible source. Congress, uh, Chairman Jordan, does this rise to the level of obstruction of justice yet? It, it sure raises that question in a big, big way. And it also raises the question like, why was Chris Ray and the FBI so reluctant to even first acknowledge that this, this uh, you know, because this is several things happening. Here, but why were they so reluctant to acknowledge there even existed this 1023 form? At first, they wouldn't say whether it exists or not. Then they said, no, well, it does, but you can't see it. Then, well, you can see it, but it's going to be redacted. Well, you can see it's going to be redacted, but only the chairman and the ranking member. Finally, they let the full committee see it on oversight. But why the reluctance there? Let us see the whole darn document. Let the country see the whole darn document. Only thing that should be redacted is the source's name. But no, 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 they can't do it. And then you couple that with all we've learned from, from Mr. Shapley and this other whistleblower. It's like, what the heck is going on here? I mean, Larry, 60 percent of the country thinks there's a double standard at the Justice Department. They think that because there is. And that is what's got to change. And that's what that's that's our responsibility now in Congress. And that's what we're working on. The roadblocks that you just laid out here, the roadblocks that appear to have come from Merrick Garland's Justice Department here in D.C., impeding Mr. Weiss's ability to fully investigate this and bring charges in L.A. and in D.C. Uh, does that, in your mind, contradict Attorney General Merrick Garland's sworn testimony that there would be no roadblocks, that Mr. Weiss can actually pursue this to his fullest power? Uh, it, it, again, it sure seems like it does. And we actually wrote the attorney general on this issue several weeks ago. And it was interesting how, how he played that, too, because we wrote to the attorney general and asking some, some key questions regarding Mr. Weiss and the status and the special counsel. And the response we got back came from Mr. Weiss. Yeah. Which I thought was strange because I've never seen that. And it's like <laughs> we wrote the attorney general about asking about how this and he just, you know, he, he has Weiss respond back to us. Again, I think it's to create this false impression that Weiss is fully in control and running this investigation right. when everything the whistleblower says in their testimony indicates that that was not the case. The timing of this plea bargain, which I believe you would agree um, is uh, less than impressive what they finally got Mr. Biden, the younger Mr. Biden, Hunter, 
to plead yeah. to earlier this week. The timing's quite extraordinary considering it was just two days before all of these revelations came through the, properly through the Ways and Means Committee. What do you make of that? I think that I think it's curious. The timing was associated with the whistleblowers. The timing associated with Durham testifying because his report was very uh, damning of of the of the way the FBI handled things and the Justice Department handled things. I think there's, you know, in this town there's typically not a whole lot of uh, when when things get released to the press. There's, there's usually some some thought uh, yeah. forethought to it and and yeah. some, some timing issues to it. So I, I think all that is interesting as well. I think I recognize the importance of the separation of power here. You're in the legislative branch. You've got the executive branch who actually entered into this plea deal through the Justice Department. And then, of course, the judiciary yeah. branch, there's going to be a federal judge who's going to sign off on it. Um, you don't want the legislative branch or the judicial branch to tell the executive branch how to go about their business. But do you think there's enough evidence now to maybe put a pause on this plea deal? Well, the judge will evaluate that, and 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 frankly, I think it's a it's a real question for the judge now that he has this evidence. Yeah. Now that he has a a, a key agent on the case saying what this whistleblower said of again the, under oath in an in, yeah, in an interview. So I do think the judge should take that all into account. Of course, if, the if problem here, Chairman so Jordan, is if a judge says no, I don't accept this plea deal, then the attorneys right. could just walk away and say, okay, then there are no charges at all. Well. They could, but uh, again, I, I, I don't, I don't know that the country would tolerate that. Yeah, I mean, for yeah. goodness sake, I think that, again, we, right now we have over sixty percent of the country who already understands there's yes. a double standard, and then you see that. So, um, I think this judge is going to give it a good hard look, okay. uh, based on again what what we've seen. I don't know the judge. I don't know when. I don't even know if it's happening, what day. But and frankly, we've even heard from Weiss. There's been sort of contradictory information. Like he said, they, there's an ongoing investigation. Well, it's an ongoing until. There's actually a plea agreement entered, and the judge, you know, rules oh, on that. Or is, is he talking about something else? I don't know. That's one of the questions we're trying to get answered as well. Meanwhile, your committee, the Judiciary Committee, it would be the forum to get a lot of those answers, but it would also be the forum, I believe, that could start impeachment proceedings on a lot of the players here. Uh, have Have you entertained that yet? Have members of your committee proposed this to you? Well, you, you know, Congresswoman Boebert had a resolution that was referred to Homeland Security, and then secondary, they referred to our committee. Uh, dealing with impeachment of, of the president, but that all dealt with the border, the situation on the border, and just you know how chaotic that's become, and I think intentionally so by the ridiculous policies that that this administration has put in place. But what I think needs to happen is that investigation needs to continue in the in the Homeland Security Committee uh, on the border situation. Mr. Comer needs to continue his investigation in in oversight relative to to uh, President Biden and his business transactions and the 150 suspicious activity reports and the 20 different companies and all this stuff. That needs to continue. He's looking to interview some key people, depose some key people, as uh, you know, here in the next several weeks. So that needs to continue. And then we, in the Judiciary Committee, we need to wait for those investigations to conclude and see the evidence that they've come together, along with what we're doing, looking at the Justice Department. And then we will make a decision as a conference. I mean, that, that's that's how this has to proceed. It's got to be done much different than the, the way the Democrats did. They didn't give any due process to President Trump. I was on the other side of the equation then, uh, advocating for President Trump, and and I've spent. You know, months yeah. it seemed, in the uh, weeks in the bunker in the basement of the Capitol when Schiff was doing these depositions and all. So we want to do it in the right way, constitutional way. But if the evidence is there, and it sure is starting to pile up, it seems to me, then then we will make that decision and we'll move forward. Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Congressman Jim Jordan from Ohio, thank you as always, sir, and I hope you have a good weekend. There's more to come here on O'Connor tonight. Keep it here on Salem News Channel.